Hey, are you here for Mongoose Part 2? Because if you are, I'm glad you're back. But I gotta admit, the reason why I split this topic into two parts is not because I didn't want to overload your brain and I care about your mental health of studying too hard, but rather I knew you would come back here because it's good for the YouTube algorithm. You might as well just call me a schema. Okay, so that's enough of the cheesy jokes. So in this video, we're going to be covering queries, indexes, and pagination. And we'll take a look at the problems that these topics will be solving, so we know when and why to use them. And we'll start off with the most important topic of them all, and that is queries, because there's no point in having a database if you cannot query your data. So we're going to start off with the exact same data model that we had before, but we're going to tweak it a little. So we started off with a user schema that had a name, email, and age properties, and it also had a created that and updated that timestamp as you can see we added it at the bottom of the schema. Now we're going to go ahead and create a new schema and this will be a post schema. So we could have a user and each user would have multiple posts. This will be a one to many relationship and we'll talk more about how to model your data in MongoDB in a future video but for now what we're going to do is just go ahead and create a new schema and this will be a post schema. Now the post schema will have a title field and we want to validate if the title field is less than 26 characters because if it is more than that we want to throw an error and likewise we'll do the exact same thing to the content field however the content field will have 2600 characters so a post will have a title and then its content now the reason why i'm creating this post schema is because I'm going to add a third field, which is the owner field. Now the owner field will contain a type and that will be set equal to mongoose.schema.types.objectID. And that is just to ensure that the value of the owner field will be an object ID. And we can also specify even further which kind of object ID can be placed inside of the owner field. So in that case, I'm gonna go ahead and add a second property of ref and set that equal to user. And that is just to ensure that the owner of this post will be a user and not an object ID from another post. Then I'm just going to go ahead and add the created at and updated at timestamps and I'm going to export the post model. So now inside of my index.js file I'm just going to require the posts model and now what we're going to do is query the data. We're just going to play around with it a little. We're going to add certain documents and get certain documents but the thing is when I go ahead and decide to say add a new post, well that is pretty simple, all I have to do is copy the add user function and make another function called add post. So I'll just go ahead and create a constant called post and set that equal to new post and give it a title, give it a content, but when it comes to the owner, I have no idea what object ID I would need to provide to it. Now inside of RoboTreaty, I can go ahead and copy one of the object IDs from a user, but that is not how automation would work, that is not how our applications would work. Nobody will be going to RoboTreaty to copy the information, what they're going to do is say they want to find all posts for a specific user, then in that case they're going to find the user, and based upon that user, they will find all all their posts or say they wanted to find a post and wanted to know who it belonged to they will go ahead and find the post and then find the user in which that post belonged to so first of all I'm going to go ahead and comment out the add post function and now I want you to imagine a scenario where we are going to create a user and this user is going to create his very first post so I'm going to create this user his name will be max and his email will be max at example.com and then his age will be 25 now once I go ahead and attempt to add the user I'm going to get an error and that is because a user with this email already exists and on a side note if the unique operator or any operator for that matter doesn't work then you're going to have to drop the database and recreate it all over again because if a specific field is meant to be unique and there's already duplicate information of it then in that case it would make sense if it does not work so max at example.com is already taken so I'm going to change it to max2 at example.com and now I should be able to add this user to the database without any errors but I still did not get Max's object ID as I just created the user. So I'm going to comment out the add user function and this time I'm just going to pass the email through just so my code becomes cleaner and I'm going to create a constant called user and set that equal to await user.find1 and specify that I want to find the user with this specific email. Then I'm just going to log out to the console the user and then call the find user by email function and just provide the email. Now when I go ahead and refresh Nodemon, I should be able to get the user that I was looking for. 
And now that I've found the user, I can go ahead and get its object ID and from the object ID, create a post. So I'm gonna create another asynchronous function and this function will be called add post. And I'll pass through it the ID of the user. And then I'm going to create a post constant and set that equal to new post with the title content and the owner will be the ID. I'll just go ahead and also log out to the console, the post and await post.save. Exactly the same way how we created the user, we are going to create the post. Then I will call the add post function inside of my find user by email function. And there I'll pass through it the user dot underscore ID. Now I'm just going to delete the other add post function that we've previously commented out and I'll just go ahead and refresh Nodemon. Now inside of RoboTreaty, I should find inside of my post collection a document where the owner is the object ID of the user who has created it. And in this example, it is max2 at example.com's object ID. Now there are other ways that we could find a specific user or a post or any document for that matter in MongoDB and one of the ways is by using a method called find by ID. So I'm going to comment out all my previous code and create another function called search by ID and there I'm going to create a constant called user and await for user dot find by ID. There I'm just going to provide the ID of the user that I want to find and in this case it will be Max's ID and I'll just log it out to the console and it will pretty much essentially do the exact same thing. Now when I search for a specific document where it was the email address, we do know that the email address was unique and in the same case when you search by an ID, we know that the ID is unique because MongoDB creates for us unique identifiers. But there is one difference between searching by the ID and searching by the email address. And that is if I search by the ID, by default, it will be a lot faster than searching by the email address. And the reason for this is essentially that MongoDB, whenever it creates a document, it will also create the unique identifier. And these IDs are by default much faster. So say I want to find the 50th document inside of my database, it will know exactly where the 50th document is because Mongo uses a technique known as B-tree, which is a lot similar to the binary search algorithm. Now, if you are unfamiliar with the binary search, algorithm a good analogy of it is say you wanted to find a specific word in the dictionary that starts with the letter s well in that case you're not going to start from the first page and start flipping through the dictionary until you find the letter s instead you're going to open the dictionary from the middle of the book and see if you've passed the letter s or if you haven't and from there you will just keep on dividing until you reach to the word that you are looking for binary search works exactly the same way and since the ids are indexed it will know exactly where they are but in our case right now we are searching for the email address and the email addresses are not indexed on our database so in order to index our emails we have to go back to our user schema and add another property to the email field and that would be index and we'll set that equal to true now one important note here is you don't want to index every single property just because indexing makes things faster because indexing does not make things faster it just makes read performance faster because yes when you read a document it will know exactly where it is but then when you write a document it would have to know exactly where to place it within the index so essentially we are sacrificing write performance for a better read performance because most our users will be reading a lot more than they are writing to the database. So to put things simply, just index the fields that you will be querying by inside of your database rather than putting indexes on every single field. Okay, so now that we understand how indexes work, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a few more queries and how to find the data that we're actually looking for. So for example, say I wanted to find a list of users where their age is equal to 25. Well, in that case, it's very easy. I'm going to create an asynchronous function called search by age, so I could use the await keyword, and then I'm going to write const users and set that equal to await user.find and inside of it, I'm going to provide an object with the property of age and set that equal to 25. Then I will log it out to the console and as you could see, I would get a list of users with the age of 25. Now note that if I use find, it will give me all the users. However, find one, it will give me the first user that it finds with the age of 25. So make sure that when you are using find one, you are using it to find a specific document where it has a unique field. Now there's also a bunch of other methods that we could use that come with mongoose straight out of the box and if I go ahead and remove the find method and just leave a dot after user I would find multiple methods available to me from mongoose that come straight out of the box. As you can see here I have find by id and delete, 
find one and delete, find one and update. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and do find one and update just to show you the difference between find one and find one and update because find one and update would be a little bit different from just find one. So inside of my search by age method, I'm just going to use the method find one and update and I'm going to find the user with the email of max2 at example.com and then I'm going to provide a second object and that second object would contain the fields that I would like to update. So I'm just going to go ahead and set age equal to 29. Now if I go ahead and refresh Nodemon, I would find inside of Robo3T that the user with the email of max2 at example.com, his age has now changed from 25 to 29. Now say I wanted to go ahead and delete max2 at example.com. Well, all I'll have to do is just simply update the method from find one and update to find one and delete. And then I'll just go ahead and specify which document that I want and that is max2 at example.com. Now, once I go ahead and refresh Nodemon, I'll go ahead and open up Robo3T. And as you could see, instead of having six documents, I have five documents and max2 at example.com is nowhere to be found. Now, one thing that is very important in Mongoose is how to find a list of documents within a specific range. So for example, say I wanted to find all the users who are from age 25 all the way to 35. Well, I could simply do that by tacking on a dot where method and the where method would take one argument and that is the property that I want to test. And then I will do dot GT for greater than, GTE for greater than or equal, LT for less than, LTE for less than or equal, and they're pretty much the exact same as MongoDB. So now once I've specified greater than or equal to 25, I could also tack on another where method and specify less than or equal to 35. Now this will give me all the documents within the range of 25 to 35. Now I can also specify other options as well. For example, where name equals Johnny. So now I'm searching for anybody whose name is Johnny between the age of 25 all the way up to 35. And I can keep on tacking on more where methods to narrow down my search results. And now inside of Robo3T, you can see I have four users with the name of Johnny that I have just added, but only two of those users with the name of Johnny are between age 25 to 35. So therefore, when I log it out to the console, it only found two users. Now, the last thing I'd like to show you in queries is pagination. So what if somebody went ahead and decided to request for all the users inside of the database? Then in that case, if I had like a thousand users, it will display to him a thousand documents, which is not a good idea. So what we can do is limit the amount of documents by simply tacking on a limit method. Now, this limit method will take in an argument and that will be the amount of documents that we want to limit by. So I'll just go ahead and put in there tree. It will limit the query by the first tree documents that it finds in the database. Now say this person wanted to view the next three documents that is inside of the database. Then in that case, I can tack on a skip method and this takes in an argument of the amount of documents that we want to skip once we start querying through the database. So normally the value inside of the skip method would start off with zero, but then it would start incrementing by the value that is inside of the limit. So since the value inside of the limit is three, then in that case, we're going to put in three. And once I refresh fresh nodemon, I will get the second three documents. And then if this user decided to view the next three documents, then in that case, this value will increment up to six and they'll be able to view the three documents after that. Now say the person who was requesting for the users wanted to view the data within an ascending or a descending order based upon their created at or updated at timestamp. Well, in that case, what we can do is tack on a dot sort method and the sort method will take in an object with the created at timestamp or even the updated at timestamp stamp and then we'll provide to it a positive or a negative integer one being an ascending order and negative one being a descending order now I know in my previous video I said I'll be covering methods and middleware in my next video. However, this video has been going on for too long because I decided to talk about indexes, which is very important in the world of MongoDB and Mongoose. But in the next video, we definitely will be taking a look at methods and middleware in Mongoose part 3 out of 3. And on that bombshell, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching.